Hello, dear friends. I'm glad to welcome everyone watching Sotnik TV this moment. It's 7 p.m. Moscow time. I'm glad to have you with us. We're streaming live. Today is January 25th, 2020. Moving to the news of the week. Gazeta Ru reports, the process of pardon for the citizen of Israel convicted of smuggling drugs in Russia. See how they can flip that, but here it comes. Sleeps in absence of your personal request. Kremlin requires that for the procedure to start. Meanwhile, lawyers point at such step being unnecessary. And mass media links her release to transferring Alexander's court in Jerusalem on the Russian Orthodox Church. End of quote. You know, this is the case when a hostage feeling the cruelty of Putin's special system got dead sad and declared, I won't do that, I don't want to play over your nasty rules. And now you hypocritical pricks may deal with it as you wish. Yet I must notice that Putin doesn't give a damn about that. He may simply expel her from Russia. Just put her on a special flight and kick out the country. He can take her home with that flight and claim that a goodwill gesture. Like I have spoken to her mother and understood she was from a good family. So here's the show of good faith. Yet he may do another way. He may set it off and say, what can I do? You know, being a lawyer, I value that law so much. I follow the letter and the spirit of the law. Were you at my feet? You were. Were you begging me? You were. Have you satisfied my emperor's nature? Have you satisfied my emperor's muzzle? Completely. I was ready to set her free, can you imagine that? All according to the deal. But as you see, that girl didn't want that. And what if she likes it in our prison? She likes how they feed over there enjoying prison cuisine. She doesn't want to go home and I don't accept any violence. I can't simply kick her out against her will. Once she wants to stay over, she may stay. It's her decision and her good faith. Thank you for Alexander's court, by the way. I like that a lot. And that will be it. You see, he is a lizard and won't feel no shame as he doesn't give a damn about enemy's opinion. And they're his enemies. Once he manages to trick them, that doubles his valor. That doubles the glory of such victory. It's clear that all those inside Kremlin Mafia eager internal power. And the only successors they see are their children. Well, that's what Mafia actually mean. A family. Well, that fits. Yet the rest of the world calls that fascism. That is nothing but Mussolini-type fascism. A classical one. The fascism as it was used to be understood and interpreted. I know that the definitions I give here are not enjoyed by those in Kremlin. By the way, I've got another confirmation earlier today from another independent source that some list of those to be neutralized has been made. That's the term I'm using, neutralization. That can be understood and interpreted as you wish. The list includes some journalists and bloggers who have managed to abandon Russia. That requires me to be extremely careful and I will do so. I have understood. But I won't shut my mouth. We must also notice that Kremlin really hopes for the population staying inert and immature. Kremlin knows that population really well. That was the topic, yet not the only one, for the expert opinion on the ongoing events in Russia and what is to be expected next by Boris Tamakhin, a known writer and former political prisoner who now lives in Ukraine. Listen to his expert opinion next. 
Regarding those changes to Russian constitution, first of all, I don't think the people will oppose that, as that is not the case. There was a risk of them opposing after their retirement age was raised, but not now. They don't care about that constitution. Unlike most, I don't see that as some special state takeover. In fact, adopting any laws or constitutions means legalizing the situation that has in fact formed upon the adoption. Same with that constitution reform. That is a simple implementation of the situation that has long formed into the legal field. That is the practical policy now. For instance, the idea is that all those international laws, regulations and treaties have been disobeyed in Russia for a long time ago. They have made a special law that allows them to keep from implementing the verdicts by European Human Rights Court they don't like. A verdict by Russian highest constitutional court cancels any previous verdicts. So now all that is being formalized on higher level, put into constitution and declared the basic principle. In reality that exists for a long time now. And I see nothing new in that. The reason is clear, they are now doing that in order to legalize lifetime power for Putin. I don't think he will agree to reside until he is dead. He has nowhere to run. I suppose they will start hunting him the day he loses the highest position. He has nowhere to go and is now trying to rebuild that system so that he can rule forever. Until he is alive he may be some state council chairman or a prime minister of a so-called parliament republic, even though he said that such was impossible in Russia. All that is guessing and doesn't deserve much of attention. We'll see how that turns out quite soon. It will be clear what Putin becomes and so on as 2024 is not that far away. I don't see any big deal in that, especially since they have thrown a bone to the population. That population won the prize for no civil rights or international law priority anyways. They don't care. And now they were given another social treat by adding to constitution that minimal wage is not supposed to be lower than living wage. Pension is supposed to be indexed in timely manner. That has now been added to the constitution and made everyone happy. What is to be expected from the population as a result of Putin's mess? What is to be expected from Kremlin itself? Another opinion on that was given by Andrei Shipilov, a famous blogger. Let's hear him next. Once not so long ago, all that gang was really busy, with some kind of formality remaining. Let's call it obeying law at least formally. We invade Crimea, capturing someone else's territory, yet hold a kind of a referendum, we send our troops to Donbass, taking all formal measures that allow us to say we're out of there. Their legitimacy in front of the world was really important. There were several clear reasons for that, so that they could speak to the rest of the world on equal terms. What has happened now, or should we rather recall that August milestone followed by that northern train inside accident, and that has changed the course rapidly. They now don't care about obeying any formal law. They have moved to another level. And that is the level of King John Il, the level of dictatorship. According to their new position, they are dictators now. They have declared that loud without having to worry about anyone responding. All the probes were taken without any reactions, they are breaking bad now. 
no matter how they are pulling off those stunts on constitution changing and despite the technology used. The unlawfulness of that is demonstrative. Some clowns get appointed to some committee over the constitution change. And the new prime minister is only appointed because of two reasons. His height and his last name. They made a joke switching Medvedev to Mishustin, who is a bit lower than Medvedev is. That means some indication as well. It's hard to believe, but those were the two reasons for Mr. Mishustin to be appointed to that position. That's it. They're making fun and breaking bad now. Any obeying law even formally is out of the question from now on. The only way to avoid the pressure from the global community now is destabilizing the world so that the authorities and the people of other countries have no time for Russia, facing their own problems. They would be busy solving our problems and stay out of us. Those in Kremlin will now get to that. Some unrest is coming, as they will provoke anything. They will escalate the situation, buying politicians off and sending terrorists. They will start some movements in each country to escalate the situation. They will set on fire, they will burn woods, they will blow dams to start flooding under the guise of some technological catastrophe. You see, they are now moving towards the global destabilization around the world. The way doesn't matter, they will use it all, no limits. They will escalate the situation, disrupting inside any country, so that everyone gets into own trouble. And so that everyone stays out of us, considering our policy some minor issue amid what's going on. That's what they're gonna do. That was Andrei Shepilov, a blogger. According to him, Kremlin will escalate situation around the world, mostly in Europe, but also that may be South America, among the rest, as well as Middle East, that will get the West busy fighting fire and citing its own problems. To have it urgently solving our issues created by Kremlin, whether openly or tacitly, those will be created for sure, just to keep everyone off that cave. Bones crunch and calls for help will come more and more clear from there. Moving to other news that, by the way, confirm my previous words as well as the words by Andrei Shepilov. Bulgaria accused three Russians of a businessman poisoning. Prior to that, mass media have stated that Emilian Gebrev, Bulgarian arms supplier, was poisoned with Novichok substance by Russian GRU agents. According to prosecutor's office, the poisoning with other unidentified substance was conducted back in spring 2015. The office issued European arrest warrant and put out an international search for those Russians. A trail of Novichok type nerve substance substance was discovered, that was also used for poisoning Skripal family in Salisbury. Bellingat Spiegel and the insider investigating that do not exclude that one of the poisoners could have visited Salisbury as well. Here's another story. We have discussed that back on Wednesday, but I can't keep from quoting that now as it was reported this week. Back in August 2019, Swiss security service noticed two Russians entering the country. One of them declared he was a plumber. The Russians were planning on staying in Switzerland for three weeks, yet they were unable to provide exact plan that seemed suspicious to the authorities. Beside that, there were Russian diplomatic passports on both of the so-called tourists, as confirmed by the local police. This week, businessman William Browder claimed to be intended target for Russian special services.
He links that to his approach on investigating the death of Sergei Magnitsky, a lawyer, as well as to him accusing Russian authorities in murdering Magnitsky and concealing the crime. I must say that William Browder is considered Putin's personal enemy by Kremlin. So I believe that special services could have been ordered to assess him. As you see, the virus of Putinism is active. A single project on homophobia in Poland reportedly took $4 billion from Russian state budget during two years. $4 billion spent for two years just to expand some LGBT-free area. That seems quite a minor problem. Does that bother you at all? Do you care about some LGBT-free area in Poland? I don't think you do, because I don't, for sure. Nevertheless, that much money is being spent for that. That is your money. And now imagine how much that cancer gang enclave overfed with resource money can spend to destabilize the rest of the world at the points chosen by them. During some mafia meeting they call Security Council. Money is no object for them when it comes to screwing the West. Take care of yourselves and your close ones during such gloomy, dark and reactionary times. It will get hard, it may even get creepy from time to time. Yeah, that needs to be overcome. Once you decided to stay there, that must be your destiny. And for some reason you really need to go through that. Yet it's critical to go through that with dignity. Thank you for being decent, smart and brave. Take care of yourselves, of your hearts and souls. Meet you next week.